So, so when he signs and his, I, you were muted. Oh, you know what? You were trying to read my lips, weren't you? Uh, yes. Well, let me start over. <laughs> Welcome to Trail Talk. <laughs> we're, yeah, exactly. Sorry about that, guys. Um, anyway, we're in our gallery studio today, and uh, our special guest is Jackie Tointai. He happens to be the featured artist here at the Chisholm Trail Heritage Center, and we'll be through the end of December. Isn't that right? Yes. And um, his pieces are for sale and they are fantastic. And he's going to um, share some stories and talk about technique and things like that. But um, we were just talking before we were unmuted that um, his Kiowa name is Black Horse. And so when he signs his art, he signs Jackie Twintai and he signs it Black Horse. Both names are on there. So um, I think I think that that's a, a really a, a great I don't know I think that's important that you do that you know it if you tie your Indian heritage in you know with your signature but then you also let everyone know what your given name is yeah. and it, you know it just it's kind of a full circle thing on that which started that was because of other artists in the United States went by black horse of course they were like western artists they were Native American uh, there's other, there other tribes that it was named Black Horse too, like the Sioux or even Cheyenne. Right. Like we have Cheyenne relatives who claim Black Horse. Uh, okay. So that's why I put my given name and my Indian name on the same side. So my grandmother, she gave me my given name and mm -hmm. she gave me my Indian name, which is her grandfather's name, who was the Orchard. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. Wow. So, well, so then it's even more important because you're, distinguish you're distinguishing yeah. which Black Horse yeah. is uh, the work the artist yeah. on the works yeah so awesome on the real black on the real you're the real deal <laughs> he's the real deal y'all <laughs> <laughs> and so uh so you uh grew up in cattle county yes. boone near mm -hmm. apache if y'all are from around there you know what we're talking about i don't know some folks might not even know where apache is you know yeah, it, but if you're from cattle county you know um and uh so um how did you get started in art? Did you always kind of just draw, sketch, things like that? Or how did it get, how did it start? My dad, he taught me when I was like six years old. And I was six years old in first grade and he taught me how to write my name. Uh-huh. So I could write my name. Right. And not print. And that's when I started. I started drawing cartoon characters like Mickey Mouse. Uh-huh. Pluto and Donald Duck. Right. That's how I started when I was a little kid. And, and when the, we had spelling, you had to give 10, 10 words and you got to write the name, how to write it down. Mm -hmm. And then while I already finished mine, I, I dabbled on the, on the paper. And make so little drawings on of, them. You know, Donald Duck or Mickey Mouse. Uh -huh. That's what I was doing. That's how I started. And she looked at it for a while and said, I like that. So I said, I had that. It's my first grade teacher. <laughs> 1950s. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's how I started. Yeah. Wow. So you've always just kind of had that in you. You've yeah. always had yeah. that that creative kind my, of. My dad was a silversmith. Oh. And he taught me how to do silver work too. Uh huh. Yeah. He was a main character in my art career. Right. It's, but did he sketch things yeah. too? Yeah. And... He sketched with Indian head for me. Uh huh. And that's why I copied off that. Ah. Uh -huh. so in fact, my first show ever was here in Duncan. Oh, really? At a mall. There used to be a mall there. Yes, on Highway 81. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's what I was at with my father. And by noon, I saw all my art. Wow. 10, 12. And I told Dad, I got to go. I ain't got nothing. So, you like to take me down? I said, no, <laughs> that's all I got. Yeah. So that was well, who would, I mean, exactly. That that probably told you, mm -hmm. okay, I've got some, I, I may create things that people like mm -hmm. and what a great encouragement for you mm -hmm. you know to I guess how old were you when you did that I was 23 23 so you had you already gone to college I was just started you had just started yeah, college. I lived in Dallas Texas for oh. seven years first work down here air conditioning heating was installed after you graduated high school yeah okay I moved to Texas uh -huh. when I came back met my wife she was pretty chicken shit she's bone Chicken town. <laughs> Chicken town. Yeah, that's where I went to school. Yeah. She graduated from there and I went there and I 
transferred to OU. Oh, okay, you went to USAO. Yeah, first. Uh huh. First, and, and studied so, art, yeah. and then you transferred the music. to music. Music, really? I, I went for music. It was too repetitious. And I, when I first put the show here, made some money. Right. On it, I changed my major to art. Probably a good move. Yeah, and I got to come with the music stuff. Well, do, do you still play instruments? Yeah. yeah. Ah. Do you ever compose music? I have. Uh huh. I have. I'll, I'll play it here someday. Oh, that'd be great, wouldn't it? Oh, we'd love that. Yeah. That'd be a nice. Too. I, have a, I have a lady friend, her, her husband plays. Uh huh. And Tim Tate plays. Yes, and yes, he played when he was here. Yeah. He brought I, uh, his um, flute. flutes. Yeah. Uh huh. Play together. And play. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Well, his brother. Uh huh. Calvert. Yeah, he said that they. Uh, I think they did some music for a video so. uh, and some things like that. Mm -hmm. So, well, that is, you know, I have found in talking to artists that you're there. It's rare that an artist is limited to one way of expressing mm -hmm. their creativity. Often, it's you know, paint and music yeah. or you know sculpting or wood carving or just whatever it is it seems like there's always something else creative people are just creative yeah i so. think believe that like tell me plays this fruit mm -hmm. i'll play my music on the face of fire do you yeah you know we've been doing a a, a lesson here for the children who come okay. about um listening to music and how it some people like see colors when they mm -hmm. listen to music. Do you ever play music okay. and feel the inspiration when you're painting? I like listening to the Gypsy Kings. Really? And that kind of gives you, know, you a Spanish feel classical uh -huh. stuff. Uh -huh. yeah. Huh. Yeah. Do you find yourself selecting different colors depending on what kind of songs you're playing? Or not blue. Yeah. It's you, just there. You really. yeah, you, you 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 use a lot of blue. Yeah. Why do you do that? Because I'm a blues man. A blues. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not, no, no, it just it happens because blues is a good color for me. Right. It's a kind of a color thing. Ah. Blue. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, that that makes a lot of sense because I mean, if you guys came here, you would see blue in almost every mm -hmm. single piece that you've done, actually. Yeah. Um, well, let's kind of start talking about some of the pieces. Where, where do you want to start? We've kind of, there. this gallery area is full, but we've just, he selected some pieces that he wants to share with you specifically. So where would you like to start? Let's start with this right here, the blue one. <laughs> this one right here. Oh, look, it's blue, y'all. I tell you what, I'm going to let you okay. kind of get, yeah. yeah Come on over here where you're still on the camera. Yeah. And um, I was going to be seeing this Yeah, she's. See, now you can see the boy. Uh huh. Maybe it's a little bit too bright up there. I'll yeah. adjust. I'll adjust this light. But anyway, the, this story was told to me by there my grandmother. Okay. My grandmother's name Nancy Tabo Torrentai. Uh huh. And it was her her father and her grandfather who were the chiefs, Kiowa war chiefs. There were a lot of war chiefs in the Cairo tribe. Just our family was one of them. Uh -huh. And she told me the story about this brother relationship, brotherly love. Right. And, and about a woman with the, the older brother's wife. Mm -hmm. She would come after the young boy after, after her husband, his brother would leave, after one war party. Right. Party, uh -huh. and she make advantage for this boy. Okay. And this young boy. Uh -huh. young man. And that's what she did. And he'd take off. He'd run into the wilderness and stay gone until his brother comes back home. He'd go back in the camp and not say nothing. Right. And she did it again and he'd, he'd take off. So at one time, she got mad at him. So she dug a hole in his teepee and he told him, Go east with me. Here, don't go with me here. He said, I don't want to go in there. So I'm not going in there with you. So food's right inside your team. Mm -hmm. So he goes in there and she walks behind him, pushes him, and he falls in his hole. And he throws a buckle over him over it and covers it up. So he can't hear him. He's in that hole with himself. 
Or a teen. Okay. Young boy. Right. right. And his mother come back. And where's my brother at? So he went into the wilderness and never to come back. That's what his wife was told. And he said, Well, so he probably got hit by the animals. And his, his brother grieved. Mm. And he said, thinking about other tribes that came close to him. He said, Let's break camp. So they broke camp. He left. He left that boy there. He was still in that hole. Uh -huh. covered up. Uh -huh. And when they left, here come the wolves out of, out of the wilderness, coming to the camp to try to find a spring of meat, then there's some food or something. Right, right. So they went into the camp and she heard somebody crying. There was a little murmur and, and there was a, some dug in that dirt around that buffalo hide and that boy was inside that hole. And he was curled up, laying down. He was cold. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 he had on breech cloth. That's about it. And right. He moccasins. Right. And so she put her tail in that hole that, where she dug. And that's her tail right there. And he's jumped up. He grabs ah. it. And she pulls him out of this that hole where she dug him. That woman, his sister-in-law dug for uh -huh. him. And she saved him, pulled him out of that little hole. And when he got him on the ground, he, he curled up. He was shivering. So the, the she wolf put her tail over him, while those other wolves all came around him too, and they put their tails over to keep him warm. Mm -hmm. So that's how the story starts. I see. What happened to that boy? Uh -huh. that, he got saved by that she wolf and her little, little group of wolves that were following her. Uh -huh. And going back to the guy, the, the big brother, they went found another place along with his cousins. He said, We got something to show you. So what? We seen something. So I said, there's a bunch of wolves and there's a boy running with them. That one boy looks like his brother. So they did. They chased those wolves down. And they got to that the she wolf to protect that boy. So they shot her and they killed that she wolf. That was his mother. Mm -hmm. He's like a little you know, son. Right. He's like a little animal. Right. And he was real mad and he started scratching them, biting them. So they had to then tie him up. Okay, they took him back to camp, and the brother grabbed him. We had to put on raw hide, mm -hmm. real tough hide uh -huh. around him. So when they grabbed him, he body, try to scratch him in the body, go through that, that hard end. Right. It's that uh, raw hide. Yeah, so leather. Like, yeah. Uh -huh. And so it won't hurt him. Right. But he started talking to his brother, and his brother started crying. And he told him that story. She was trying to get close to me mm -hmm. and I didn't want to, I left. And she built, dug a hole and pushed me in there and covered me up. And that brother, knowing what she was doing, got his sisters and his cousins and his nieces. They made a meal out of buffalo meat and called say coin. You know, they make it like a uh, sausage. Oh, okay, uh-huh. And they made that, say coin. And they make a whole lot of it. He wrapped around her neck um. and exiled her from camp. And not there to the horizon where his wolves waiting on her. Ah. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah, that's what happened. They ate her up. But mm -hmm. the deal is with that brotherly love. Yeah. Dealing with that type of situation that he was, I don't know what, what to think. Because my grandmother told me that story. Right. That was like in my early 20s. Uh huh. But they were, like I said, they're like, PG or something. <laughs> but it is a little gruesome. <laughs> yeah. It is. But I mean, um, you know, in the uh the the culture of Native Americans, mm -hmm. um, when when they lived on the plains, there was, you know, there were certain rules kind of about how you treated people and how you didn't, right? And yeah. the consequences of doing something yeah. like that, that was, she, it sounds like she made, she chose poorly. <laughs> yeah, she did. And that's what that was. Uh -huh. like I said, some of these stories are graphic. Right. You know, they're not for like fairy tale. I got fairy tale for little kids. Uh, yeah, yeah. But these are, my grandma told me, these like these other stories. This other one's about Native American church. So, um, well, just a minute before okay. we, so that that's the story behind. Yeah. So tell us now how you 
like the technique you used to actually create this work because this is I don't know if you guys can truly appreciate just how it there's of so much detail mm -hmm. in this and yet it has a lot of it seems random you know a lot of the color and a lot of the line it seems random when you first look at it but on closer examination, you can see that it it actually all fits together mm -hmm. perfectly. So, kind of tell us about the technique. This technique is I call it wet on wet. You get the canvas wet with water, mm -hmm. like a wash rag, and then I lay it flat. Uh huh. I lay it flat. Okay. And I get the paint and mix it. In this case, it was blue, and I'm some white with it. Uh huh. And I'll just throw it on your flat and move it around and it'll start bleeding into the whole canvas. Yeah. Like move the yeah. And because the canvas is wet, it absorbs the yeah. paint. And it absorbs like that. Uh-huh. It gets a different, different uh, like the radiation of colors. Okay. It's so it's like it like it bleeds yeah, in, like it the and spreads like yeah. that. Okay. That's what that is, wet on wet. Ah. And that's what that is. And then it, I start seeing stuff like the wolf face, or uh -huh. the man's, or the lady's face, or even the wolves that are all standing around looking down that hole. Right. You see it all standing around. Yes, there's one howling yeah, right there's here. One looking down there's another one. Uh huh. There's there's one there. even yeah. right up here above. This this yeah, is a brother. A wolf right. Oh, okay. The brother has the wolf head on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, it's and eyes. There are eyes in all of these pieces that he brought, or most of them, and they're. The eyes are just, they just really catch you. That is, uh, that is a, and now that you share the story, it really helps me even appreciate, mm -hmm. you know, what you created here even more. It's, it is just a fantastic work. Thank you. It's, yes, it's lovely. I love this piece. And what, do you know what this is called? It's called a wolf's tail. A wolf's tail. Yeah. T A L E. Yeah. Little play on words there. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. A wolf's tail. That is. That's awesome. That is great. I love that. The story is. It. It just yeah. means so much more now. Which one do you want to go to next? Let's go to this one right here. Okay. Right here. All right. We're going to move over this way. You guys just kind of bear with us. Come on over here. Yeah. Uh, well. You want to start with these two, or go to this? I'm going to start with this one right here. Okay. Because. This is a, 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 an origin of our peyote religious rite. Okay. And the story behind it is that this small group of Indians, a band of Apaches, were walking in South Texas. Uh -huh. And this mother and her son, the mother fell ill and she started lacking behind, slowing the tribe down. So what they did, they said, we got to leave y'all. So we can't stay because y'all are going to get us killed too from mm -hmm. other warring tribes. Y'all are probably looking for us. Right. So they left that boy and his mother there, and they and walked. And is this the mother lying down Yeah, that's the mother in the back. Okay, and then the little that's boy. That's the boy. And they was down in the desert. They found it was hunger. And then the, the little boy, he cried, and he wanted to help his mom, but he couldn't. And she suffered too, too, until she was almost dying, you know. Right. And then some, some spirit talked to him, said, pick this up, eat this. It's 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 your it's like water and it's food. These green Yeah, uh -huh. it's like, that's peyote. Oh, okay. And that's what he said. I can't see him. It's like that. It's like, where's that? Uh-huh. And all of a sudden he said, it's all around him. And he looked down again, that spirit told him, look down, you know, it's all around him. He said, eat it. That's what he's getting ready to do, eat that peyote. Uh -huh. It's just thirst and his hunger. And he said, give it to your mother. So that's what he did. He gave it to his mother. She she got all right. She got healed. Mm -hmm. They went on. And they found her, found her, found her people. Right. When they found her people, the brother, to the, his uncle and his sister said, Where, where's, that, where's that boy at? Where's he at? He said, he went on top of the hill east of here, east of the camp. He was on top of the hill, sitting up there, singing songs. Uh -huh. That spirit told him how to sing these songs. And he used that bow and arrow like a drum. Made a hundred something. Uh -huh. That's when he started that, that little boy. That's a story. 
Oh, okay. Of course, every tribe in the United States has this. This kind of a, would you call it a fable or a legend, maybe? A, legend, a legend. A legend. A legend, it's a legend but it's uh -huh. true. We did find this peyote. Right. And that was in Mexico. Right. Okay. I've read stories yeah. about um, about those. Yeah. That. And there was a, a tribe down here that showed us that way. Uh huh. Yeah, we like that and so is, is this the spirit then yeah, that's, that's okay, helping the little boy? And there we go with that little boy growing up. Oh, okay. So here he is. Yeah, and he's by himself. Uh -huh. And this one's like a Peoli story, <clears throat> but it's also called a, a, The Sky is My Teeth. Okay. That's, and that is beautiful. And now these two pieces are done with acrylic paint. Yeah, they're, they're all acrylic, except this is oil. This one is okay. oil that we'll get to in just a yeah. minute. Okay, yeah. and so this this carries on. Then this is the boy yeah. as as he's just an older boy yeah. now. Okay, the young man. Uh huh. And that's where he makes that moon. That moon's a moon represents a moon, and that moon that's there. It, usually, a crescent moon when it comes out like that. Right. That uh, signifies a, a woman oh. have given get ready to have give birth. Oh, okay. That's what that represents. That crescent moon. And that's when they have that in that ceremony. You got a bar right there in the middle. Of the right. Room. There's that peyote right there. I see. Okay. Yeah, they sing songs. That's where he's at. That's when you start giving songs and start singing. Uh -huh. That's where it comes in when he's getting older. Then he's a young man here. Yeah. Then. And after that, it, it just went on. It is, his, uh, I think it was uncle got the, got a drum to take away that, that, that uh, humming sound that, that, uh, Bow and arrow. string. Yeah. Uh -huh. it, he made a water drum. He hauled out a log, burned it out, he put water in it, and stretched a hide over it, and made a drum. Oh, okay. See, that's when they added that drum. He sits next to the, he's the main, he's the peel chief. Okay. Yeah. And so, and so these are all um, like the kind of the backstory yeah. of how the peyote came to yeah. your people. Yeah. And how these uh, the rites and rituals yeah. all came to be. Yeah, my great grandfather, named Joe Blackbear, he was one of the original signers of this uh, church, uh, Native American church, in 1918. Oh, okay. In October 1918. Uh huh. And he was one of the first signers for that, for, for it to be a, a organization, a church. So, is this the same church that Quanah Parker? Yeah, that that's, was yeah. part of too. It's part of that, but okay. it came later to them. Oh, it came later to they, the Comanche. The, the Mexican Indians introduced it to the Apaches. Okay. The Apaches came you, and introduced it to the Comanches, and then the Kiowas and the Cheyenne Arapaho, and they all came into it. Uh huh. So that's yeah, because the Apaches were farther west, yeah. weren't they? And well, and, all over. They yeah, everywhere out there. The, yeah. the plains, the plains tribes were they covered a lot of ground <laughs> yeah that was covered us. a lot of ground yes was, for sure picks the bear states that so when we, we came to medicine park or came to that mountain scott mount scott oh is that and that's what that is that's, in the background yeah. okay um before we go to that one so um we said these two are acrylic and then this that's one a, is oil it's oil on a mahogany wood stain panel so red mahogany red mahogany and then you stained it with red mahogany with red stain. mahogany stain yeah. oh okay and then you painted on it with oil paint yeah. i have never seen uh this technique done before i this is and it's quite beautiful it's very yeah. um it's very interesting how the paint looks it because it gives a matte finish yeah. to the paint doesn't it yeah it's, it's it's not like acrylic or watercolor where it's kind of transparent this it's there uh -huh. so you got to really match the color to make it look like buckskin or make it look like a feather or his face you know stuff like that you got to mm -hmm. use lights and darks different color schemes on the face and the hands right and the leggings and the moccasins and the colors of the, the, the bead work on the on the gourd and on the staff right the, so, um, is this something that you learned to do in college, to, uh, or just something you thought you would try, or how did how did this how was that a, a because this guy 
just can go back to the same thing. He was a professor, art, art he's an anthropology professor, and he wrote a book on peonyism. Uh -huh. He told me, my other professor buddy told me that. I said, well, how do you know, what does it feel like? You eat peyote? He said, no, I never have. And he, he wrote a book on peyote, you never ate it? He said, well, I said, so how do you know what, how it feels? He said, well, it's a, it's a hallucinogenic, and you get the feeling of euphoria. I said, I don't even know what that means. Right. Euphoria. Yeah. And I said, well, have you ever ate peyote before? I said, sure. He said, well, how old were you? I said, six. He said, six years old? <laughs> That's why I was letting that keep you when I was six. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So that's what I grew up like that, uh -huh. in, in that church. Yes. I said my great grandfather was one of the original one signers. One of the original of signers yeah. of that. Yeah. That's that is something, huh? So, um, something else that I was noticing we were talking about earlier was how you use negative space mm -hmm. to, um, or that's that's how it seems to me, to allow. The person admiring your works to see things yeah. you know fill in the gaps because like his whole body is just the mahogany yeah you know there's no paint on it and yet when i look at it i see his whole body yeah. you know his trunk and everything i see it there but then whenever you really look closely you realize you're, that it's not painted it's you know it's just a negative space and that's a that's really so such a great it's way. all our very It is. It really is. This one is this light sky. Uh-huh. looking at him. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, he is absolutely the focal point whenever you look at that. He's got that bow and arrow in his hand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Changes over the years. So um are there like these pictures? Um, we see some feathers. Yeah. Um are, are the feathers significant? I noticed there's a red feather mm. on him here yeah. and here. What what kind of a feather is that? It's an eagle feather. It's oh. an eagle plume. Okay. You know, like the women's hat in their hair. Uh huh. Before it's the it's the the plus of a of the eagle right here. It's that right there. Little oh, okay. That's Just the little part. Yeah. Okay. And it, they they tie it. Ah, okay. And is that a, a Kiowa or Apache? Kiowa, Kiowa and Apache. Okay. And other tribes use it now. You know, they all work buckskin. Right. Well, other tribes, they don't work buckskin, but they got buckskin down. Ah. That's what I'm saying. It's going back centuries. So a couple of weeks ago, do you know who, uh, Bill Volker from SIA? Yeah, I do. Over know. there? Okay, so he brought a golden eagle yeah. with him, and he was telling how this these are the feathers that drop off of a yearling golden eagle the black and white feathers because mm -hmm. then they come in and they're brown you yeah. know that more brown uh -huh. and um but that's what these are right yeah. are these golden eagle yeah, they're feathers all gold. a lot of people talk about the national yeah. birds being the bald eagle right we don't use that bald eagle uh -huh. in fact it's bad medicine to us you know aren't you guys use gold, the golden, golden eagle, eagle yeah. the same as the Comanche. Of course, other birds too, like the uh, red tailed hawks and uh, mm -hmm. all those other pheasants. Oh, right. You know, these feathers of them. As far as my grandfather, Black Horse, his feathers was medicine, was a, a hooping crane feather. Really? Yeah. Wow. It was his medicine. Interesting. Yeah, huh. so I told my grandma, I said, they're an extinct bird. Right. She said, yeah, I guess so, but that's that, you know, that was your great great grandpa's medicine. That was his medicine. Yeah. So when they became extinct, did he just? Well, I mean, I don't know if he was around or not, but I guess whoever that, used those feathers, there, they did they lose their medicine. I mean, it's on a warship. Were they able to just kind of switch to a different bird's feathers? I don't know. Yeah, that, well, is that what yeah, they had this, to do? On black horse, he made a warship for white bear. Did you hear that? Black Bears Warship, same, same museum over there at the guardhouse in Fort Sale. Oh, no, I haven't, That's I haven't where seen that. That's where that Warship is. It's got the, it's got the hooping crane feathers really? on it. Really? And it's got the hooping crane head on it. Wow. I did not know that. I'm going to have to go up there and look, look at, at that. It. Yeah. I found it in, in the University of California at Berkeley. That's where I found it. Where we got the appointment. You can go see it. Uh huh. Look down, way down the archives, and pull it out. 
whatever it was, if they can do green heat on it, exactly what my grandmother described. Right. And so it's your grandfather's. Yeah, my great grandfather. Your great grandfather. Uh huh. And so you were you able to have it moved? Oh yeah, they had to. They, they had to uh, ask it at the, the university about. It. You think the Congress would want this? I said, well, the natural law states they can heat it any time they want. Right. So the only thing bad about that is that they have no place to house it. Mm hmm. So I told him about the pork sizzle, but I could give him a big pot of cake, two on those five. Right. Sure enough, they got it. They can that right now. And that is that is fascinating. Yeah. I wow. Was, I was there when they brought it back and had a big hoop on the pork sizzle. Oh, I bet. Yeah. I bet. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, um, okay, let's uh, give Tina a chance to move the camera and everything over a little bit so we can kind of look at this other wall over here. I'm gonna turn our microphone around here and I'm gonna turn the lights too so that, although those are pretty well lit, aren't they? Those lights up there seem to be really good on that. So, um, okay, I'm gonna, all right, Jackie, so just kind of start, start us off. Let's talk about the, this painting here. Okay. It's like a high painting, but it's not. It's a watercolor paper to make it look like that. And it's a, a migration story of where we came from. Ah. See, we didn't come from Caddo County. Right. <laughs> See, this is up north. Okay. We were walking. That's where we came from. Uh huh. You're walking, are, are you walking east then? We're walking, that... we're walking south. Oh, Come, okay. Coming from the north. Oh, okay. And here's when we got down, we've got the Spaniards, we got their horses. That's us again right there. Ah, my baby again. After you got the horses. Yes. Yeah. And that's wow, back to 1540, 1541, when we first met uh, Coronado. Right. He's when he came and seen us. He seen us walking. He even had little dogs that's pulling the mm -hmm. bags. Right, pulling the. Uh... Oh, what are those little things called? Triple boys. Yeah. Pulling yeah, the triple boys. Uh -huh. Put your packs on them. Pack That's where we ended up. But our original homeland is, is the Black Hills of South Dakota. Oh. Not right. the Sioux. We came here because we, after we had that treaty of 1867, they asked the tribe, Kiowa, Comanches, and Apaches, where y'all want to be at. And we wanted to be on the east side of the Wichita Mountains. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is Lake Matonka right there. Uh -huh. And that's where our camp was, the Kiowa Patches. And on the further back south, where Kiowa was back here by Mount Sheridan, okay. Kiowa land. Okay, on this side of Mount Scott, on this side, all Comanche land. Ah. And that's how you got, well, Durant, not Durant, Geronimo, and Cash. Comanche, yeah, Cash, Cash it's all and Comanche. All that, all yeah. that, okay. Anything north of there is Kyle Ah. And the east side is our people. This side. Okay. Ends up going by Surreal. Yeah, of Surreal Apache. That, there, was our, yeah. that was our original idea. But moving here because it looked our, like our own homeland, the Black Hills. Right. They are low like that. And that yeah. the biggest one then is Mount Scott. Yeah. Yeah. So that, wow. I did, I mean, I, I probably just didn't think about it when I first looked at it, but it's very obvious that those are the, that that that's the what you the horizon when you look at the horizon mm -hmm. that's what it looks like and I love the detail you put the scissor tails mm -hmm. on there the buffalo and this is the way we these come from the north too these staffs oh I was just about to ask you about those yeah we got a battle with the Blackfeet Indians you took them yeah I took them and then did you got did your people then start using those yeah. and making them for yourself? We have them danced every year. Ah. And they pull out these staffs, they danced for the dance. Oh. Wow. Over there. You have one? Like, yeah. It's right there on that one with a star. Okay. Um, Tina, you want to grab that one, that painting, and bring it over here? Oh, no, yeah, just bring it over here. Well, she'll bring it over okay. here so we can look at it. That one right up there? Yeah, that one. Yeah, so this this piece, I, I this might be one of my very yeah, right there. yeah, there it is, right there, <laughs> right. exactly. Okay, so let's um, I'll just put it like right here okay. then, and you want to uh, 
Okay. So See, these are these oh, are yeah a little clearer look at yeah, the staffs. Yeah, that's staffs. That's, uh -huh. this, this one here is a Kyle Apache. Oh, okay. Kyle Plains Apache. This is a Kyle Shield, Sun Shield. Okay. And there's the Comanche. Look that Comanche breed. Right. Right here, like that. Right. Kind of tell them apart. Okay. I that's, see. It's, it's kind of a take on a, a Christmas. Three, three oh, rise mm -hmm. very cool yeah I yeah i mean it does look like the yeah. christmas star right there yeah that and is it, like it, it does how did you do that i mean is it literally glitter paint it's or? Paint, yeah oh, it's paint. it is this is really pretty it's a very yes. pretty piece i love it and I'm, I'm i'm telling you guys here in Hearing the stories, here, we'll set that over here and put it away here in a little bit. Um, hearing the stories that go with these really brings it to life for me, Jackie. Yeah. I mean, I'm just, there's such a greater appreciation when you know the stories. Do, do you find, you want to come back over here on camera a little bit. Um, do you find that, um, are, are the younger people as interested in knowing all of the stories, like what you're telling me as, you know, as you were, but how do you feel about, um, you know, how you're gonna be able to pass all of this on and continue this important cultural, you know, the, these, I don't, I don't even know what, how to say it, but you know what I'm oh, talking yeah, about. How, exactly. do you, how do you keep your culture alive, you know, and interest the younger people? in learning all about your ways and, and your people. This is a step right here, coming to the museum uh, and seeing some of the art. That's a really that's good, a, yeah, that's a great point. That was a question back when I did lectures at the universities, uh -huh. talked about this. And the question back in 88, 89, should Native American art and culture be introduced into the public school system? Mm -hmm. I said yes. 100%. So yeah. I did that in Missouri at the university. Really? Tell them the same thing. Uh -huh. It begins in the home. Yes, yes. If that's you want true. your son and daughter to be a war dancer, teach them. You want to be an artist, teach them. Mm -hmm. Tell them to do this way. This is how you do this. Mm -hmm. This is how you do that. Yeah. With respect. Right, right. But now it seems like it's all wrong. Yeah. I hope we might see some of this and then. I, I, I think, I that. mean, that's a, that's a wonderful idea, you know, to take some of your art and share some mm -hmm. of the stories like you've been mm -hmm. um, telling us today. I, that's a, I really love that idea. That's straight out of art history at the University of Oklahoma. Really? That's where I got the idea of absorbing sort of art and talking about it. And making your, the stories come to yeah. life on canvas, yeah. and then that gives you something to mm -hmm. share the story and something visual to go yeah, with. Yeah, instead of looking at me, they look at the art. Right. This, right. This, 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 that, that yeah, tell us, that. tell us about this piece. As with Black Rose, I think they made six war shields that hung in the Sundance Lodge. And one was that White Bear's war shield, I told you that. Right, before. right. And these are. They use a shield that bump the hump, the hump of buckles, probably the hardest part of the whole body. That's what they use for the shield. Of course, it's got all these other, you know, paint animals that are part of it too. The eagle, uh -huh. bear, of course, the warrior. And he's, there's that sun shield right there. Uh huh. And there's the golden eagle right yeah. there, isn't mm -hmm. it? Wow. That, yeah. And I, I mean, I hope you guys can, can see all of these again. They're not 100%. It's not like you see the whole yeah, animal or the whole person, but you yeah. you see it. Yeah. You see it there. And and the eyes, of course, just draw you in. Um, but I mean, here's even the moccasin yeah. and the leggings of the warrior right there. Kind of superimposed over the whole uh -huh. painting itself. Uh -huh. And this is done with acrylic. Yeah. And then I love how you it looks like you splattered this orange and it looks like where the buffalo hooves are hitting the ground, mm -hmm. the dust is flying up around. It's, I mean, it's just amazing. The way you use color too. Yeah, that, that, that's what I'm thinking about. The blue, you can make any color, but it goes into the face too. Mm -hmm. You know, it's gonna kind of blends in with the faces. Yes. Like a little bit of green or whatever. Right. So, 
about how long would you say maybe it would take you to paint something like this? I do like four or five or six at a time. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh. Because something like that, probably about a week. Really? Yeah, because I'm going back to the detail. Oh, when right. You get the hood, you the right. Yeah, that's what I do. I keep buying up. And you, you said, is this one a wash? Yeah. Also, so, but it's done with acrylic, acrylic instead of watercolor. Yeah. You get the same idea because it's, it's a water-based paint. Right. And so is there an actual story that goes with this one, like with these Like others? I said, these are just like the horse of the sun shield. Uh -huh. just, of course, they're part of the book book. Huh? The horses, this bird, part of the race, and the bear, white bear. Uh -huh. You see, it's where you got that sun shield from. Okay. That's all that. And this one, oh, that's already put up. That one right there. Right. Yeah. That's the will. idea of what I'm going to Let's let's just pull it. I'm gonna just hold this one and let you talk about it. It's a little bit big, but I think we can do that. I will. We can hold it together, maybe. Yeah. There we okay. go, like this. And now Tina can back up. There we go. Let's put it against the wall a little yeah. bit more so the lights on it. Ah, okay. there. Now that looks good. Okay. You can look at this picture here. That woman in that buffalo. This one right yeah. here. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. It, it's kind of oh. most of this one and the other ones over there. Of that girl sitting by the water that, that painted that long one. Yes, right, there. right up there. Uh -huh. And she made a wish. She made a wish. And she was a buffalo bone in the yard where she down a creek getting water. And she said to her, talked to herself, if you were a man, I'd marry you. And there was a buffalo rib. Mm -hmm. And she went back to camp. And she took that evening water. That's what she got. Right. She okay. That. That day, next day, she, went, she couldn't wait to go back. She went back over there and started talking to that, that boat again. And she noticed something behind her. And she turned around and there was a young man standing behind her, all dressed up, you know. Uh -huh. And she went, he went to talk to her to come with him. And she fell in love with him. So he walked off and left that water there and, and, and got away from camp and was miles away she got tired she said where are the people he said you're standing among them and she looked around and she was around it hurt a buffalo she was right in the middle of it and that man turned into a buffalo and he had silver horns that buffalo wow yeah but she made a wish if you're a man uh -huh. and so, so he, he became yeah he yeah had silver horns and he was mean to her yeah, be careful what you wish for. Right. And that's what that man about his story. But then comes Thunder Man. Here he is. He's uh -huh. got the story of Thor, you know. Oh, but, okay. Yeah. And he comes to save her through that buffalo. That buffalo. Mm -hmm. That's her. And he, he comes down and kills that buffalo. But he couldn't kill his bows and arrows. He said, because it, it was like shooting a rock. So they said, they climbed a tree to get away from this buffalo because when they, they found he wasn't uh, he wasn't uh, took her from camp, that buffalo started killing those young buffalo bulls because they thought they might have hit her. Uh -huh. But all this time, Thunderman took her. And that buffalo found her scent and took after her. They started tearing rocks up, the mountains really. Right. And trees, ripped the trees apart just to get to her. And they, they climbed a tree. And he found out the only way they could kill her. That spirit said, shooting between the cloven hoof huh. and the bow and arrow. So he shot that buffalo's hoof and it killed that right so, between the yeah, uh -huh. was, that cloven hoof. And that's what killed it. Wow. And that's the story. What a great that. and this the silver horns, it makes me think of like a centaur or something, you know, some that's my, my uh, it's the last of the silver horns. Oh really? Wow. My dad's people. Wow, that is that is so cool. I just, I mean, are you guys loving this as much as I am? This is this is so great. And so this is another version of, of that of her and, uh, and the silver horned buffalo. Yeah. Very, very nice. He's getting the he's getting one more. Now this is the this is the while well, she's in the water. Okay. And, uh, 
And there's the Caesars. They are the theirs, and there's the buffalo. Yeah, and that's where he comes out of it. It's a man. Uh huh. Oh, I see. I bet he's a buffalo too. You've yeah, got, the yeah. Buffalo horn. Oh, okay. In the silver horns. Mm -hmm. Wow. And that's the part of the story of music. This girl making a wish at the, at the stream when she's getting her even water. Oh. And my grandmother told me this story. Your grandmother had a yeah. lot of good stories, she Jackie. Went, one of the last ones that they would go to a Sundance you know, back in the day when they, they outlawed it you know, among the cows. They outlawed the dances? Yeah, back in the 20s, I think. Really? Come on, come back over yeah, here on the camera. There, there we go. Um, so do, do, do your, uh, all of your paintings have a story that goes with them? Majority of them. The majority of yeah, them do? Yeah, I, I, like this peyote story. Mm -hmm. like this. Mm -hmm. These are just like symbols of our- Right, movie. this one is. Yeah. And then, the, the, and this one, Kind of tells the story. This one Our makes me think story. of a uh, like a hieroglyphic, yeah, almost. You know, with just the mm -hmm. the just the very uh, simple yeah. human forms, and the same with the humans on the horses. Although these horses are very decorated, um, but that's kind of what it makes me think of as a, hieroglyph a hieroglyphic yeah. type. It's not called, uh, also, it's a hieroglyphic type. Right, a high journey. Yes, which is which is what the hieroglyphics would yeah. have been. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, but it it looks like it's leather, but it's watercolor paper, and he did a technique that made it look like leather. It's very mm -hmm. cool. It's a really cool work. Wow. So, um, you started painting then in your twenties. Yeah. In your, uh, I say mid. Early, early, mid, got, early 20s, something like that. I got an award for art when I was in college. Wow. You know, I grand award, uh -huh. at a Navajo Nation Fair. Really? I won a grand award at the Indian Fair in Darko a couple it, times. Uh -huh. And I quit after that. I said, I don't want to you know, make people mad, you know, because they say, ah, oh, he's, he's a professional. That's why well, they pay money for this stuff. Right. And I, I'm going to do it again, but not, not around here. Yeah. So I've never been to an art show. Really? I've You've never had an art show? I've had a one-man show in Wichita, Kansas in 1990, 91. Yeah. Really? At the Mid-America All Indian Center Museum. Oh, I feel like we've missed out. And by you not, by not, you not having th shows like this for people no. to just see and I, appreciate your work. And the, the university, Wichita State University sponsored it. Really? That's why I said, should Native American art be introduced into the public school system? Right. Yes, it should be. I I really think that I mean you would be able to absolutely catch the children's there, you know, at least at the very least, they would be hanging on your words and mm -hmm. looking at your works and just following that story and just it's like any other story, you know, you just hear these stories over and over again and you kind of make make the little connections. Mm -hmm. It would be a great starting point. It will. It could. I, and, I really hope that that is something that comes about. It came about in Missouri because uh, my professor buddy there at the university asked me, hey, there's an art teacher from this high school, grade school, about 10 miles from here. They, she wants you to come over and talk to her students. Mm -hmm. She said, it'll be like 10, 15 of them. Yeah, sure. She said, they're going to pay you an hour by the hour. And I said, well, good, okay. Yeah. So I did. And, and at the end of it, I was, had all that stuff on, on the TV, the paintings. Mm -hmm. And I talked to them, those kids, that, that stuff. And there's probably about 75, 80 kids in there. Right. Not 15. Yeah. And from first grade all the way to eighth grade. Wow. It was like a middle school. Uh -huh. Yeah. And toward the end, the school was about out. And all those older kids were getting, you know, those ENCs were trying to get one of them me. You know? Right. And this, I said, is there any questions? And that one little girl fetched me then. I said, yes, what's, what's that you want? She said, can you tell us another story? <laughs> You know, those, those guys in the audience would, oh, oh they go <laughs> no, on that. Their story. Yeah, they, they like it. Sure they, they do. Like they like, sure. little kids' stories. Right. Called rabbit story. We're real rabbits. That's what they are. Uh -huh. Cautionary. Right. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, some of them are like a like a cautionary tale, like yeah. the the wolf's tale, you know? Yeah, about, and, uh, about maybe not that. 
graphic, but there one's about this coyote's always trying to get over everybody, uh -huh. trickster. Oh. And he's always trying to fool people and stuff. Uh -huh. They got stories like that from the kids. Right. They love that stuff. My son told it in the first grade. Really? To his class? Yeah. Oh, and what his a great... teacher gave him an award because <laughs> I'm talking to them kids. And I, he takes them half them to the other side, talks to them some stories that you told him. Right, right. Yeah. That's funny. They're real kids' stories. Yeah, they are. Well, um, maybe you should write those stories down and put oh, yeah. pictures of your pictures yes, yes. as an illustration. Mm -hmm. You know, and make you a book. I'd buy a Jackie Toyn Tie book, wouldn't you? Oh, no. yeah, one hundred percent. Didn't you? They asked me to do a book. You keep walking off the camera, oh, there, Jackie. I'll keep, well, just, I'm trying to. Uh, there we go. Get that. Get My your good arm. side on there. <laughs> there you go. Well, the little kids are very special. My, right. my grandkids, mm -hmm. my grandsons, they're all good little kids. Mm -hmm. They're really receptive to me. And I got great grandchildren. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I think that would be remarkable to have mm -hmm. a, a children's book of, of your mm -hmm. tale, your the stories, and then, you know, the, the painting that you created to go with it as an there's illustration. That would be book, awesome. There's a book out called Jim White Wolf. The mm -hmm. life of a Kiowa Apache Indian. Huh. It's about my great grandfather. Oh, really? The one that did that sign that. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's about him. And wow. toward the end of it, he, he died before the book was you know, finished. finished. Yeah. Uh -huh. And they didn't finish the book yet. The professor of anthropology told me, said, Jackie, you ought to finish that or you end up because I'll have his land. Mm -hmm. I, I'm buried into his land. Right. I got his land. Mm -hmm. Sitting Boone, where I live. Uh -huh. That's where I live now on his land. Wow. Joe Blackbear is his name. Uh -huh. but it's about him. Joe Blackbear, but the book is called. They changed the name. Oh, okay. Protect the Innocent. <laughs> Probably. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah for real. Because it's real. pretty, it's pretty graphic. Not real, not that much. Like this uh -huh. talks about when he first come back out of the wilderness and to the, you know, reservation area. Mm -hmm. They cut his hair off. Right, yeah. all the things that happened yeah. to the Native Americans mm -hmm. as they were, yeah. And he mentions my name in there at the end. Mm. He, said, he said before he died, he said that he, I willed my land. He said he willed his land to his grand, great grandson. Mm -hmm. In that book, my name is Johnny Lee. Is my that name, what? My name is Jackie Tornton, Jackie Dale. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, That's name, what right? he meant. <laughs> Yeah, but he changed your name to protect you yeah, too, right? Yeah, and so he has his uh -huh. land. I said, yeah, I still have. It. Uh huh. Yeah. Wow. But it's well, good. Jackie, this has just been a phenomenal episode of Trail Talk, and I oh. hope a lot of people see it. And um, for those of you who watch, be sure and share it, and let even more of your friends see it, because um, I think we have learned a lot about. Mm -hmm. uh, Native American culture, just kind of in general, but mm -hmm. specifically about the Kiowa Apache mm -hmm. people and just some of your great stories, your mm -hmm. legends that you guys have passed mm -hmm. yeah. down. Yeah. Um, just so educational. I, I thank mm -hmm. you very much. And you guys got to see just a smidge of his wonderful pieces of art. Come to the Heritage Center. Mm -hmm. You won't regret. You will not regret coming to look at these. So anyway, Jackie, thank you so well, much for coming. Thank you, Edie. Yeah. Yeah. Tina and, and the museum, Leah, for yeah. inviting me here. Scott. Right. So I've enjoyed my time here. I'll be back. Good. And we'll do it again. I sometime. hope so. Sure. Bring an instrument and come play some music for Ooh, us too. I'll get Tim. Oh, yeah, you guys come and play together. That would be awesome. Okay. We would love it. Hey, listen, when we uh, say goodbye, we like to say happy trails together. So you want to join yeah. me? Okay, well, let's say it. One, two, three. Happy, happy trails. trails.